We continue in our series on the fruit of the Spirit with a focus today on patience and faithfulness. One of the first things that pop in, popped into my mind as I started to dwell on this was something that happened recently with my son. We were driving in the car, just me and him, and he was in the back seat, and in a joking manner, uh, as I saw by his facial expression in the rearview mirror, he said, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Every parent knows that question. And sometimes their child isn't asking the question to ask the question, but rather to joke with you and uh, see how long you'll, you'll go in asking that question. And so as a good father, I gave the right reply. No, 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 no. And then I turned the nose into a song and just kept going. Because that's what a good father does. <laughs> well, as we talk about patience and faithfulness, I want to focus first on a little bit of the work that the Spirit of God is doing and what Paul wrote in Galatians to give you that base foundation as we talk about the fruit of the Spirit. Paul encouraged us in Galatians to walk in the Spirit, to live by the Spirit. And then after going through the, the fruit of the Spirit, he says again, walk in the Spirit. The work of God within us is based upon God himself. Jesus said in John 15, verses 1 through 11, I am the vine and you are the branches. Abide in me and I'll abide in you and you'll bear much fruit. So we are as Christians to abide in Christ and to walk in the Spirit, to live by the Spirit. And when we do these things, the fruit of the Spirit will flow from our hearts. We're to focus not so much on the fruit themselves, but rather the one who brings the fruit about within us, the Spirit himself. And to stay connected to the vine. And when you do these things, the fruit will flow. And so this is the foundation. Abide in Christ. Walk in the Spirit. Seek the Lord every day. And you'll see the fruit begin to flow. Today we're going to look at patience and faithfulness through the story of Abraham. In the story we see God's faithfulness and patience with Abraham. God remained faithful through each and every time of Abraham's life and was patient with Abraham even as Abraham strayed from God's promises. Now Abraham was faithful and at times was patient. And yet as we read his story, we see that he lacked faith and over time began to lack patience. He took matters into his own hands, believing that that was God's will. God commends us in our life to seek him, to trust him, so that he could work his good will and his purposes out within us. What is faithfulness? Faithfulness means to be committed Constant, not strain from an agreement or covenant. There can be faithfulness in doctrinal truth. That is to believe in God or the belief of God to have faith. Or as it says there in Genesis that Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. There is faithfulness in relationships to be faithful to your spouse or to your friends. Or in the story we had today during the children's message, faithfulness in a commitment and a promise that one makes 
to others. You could have faithfulness in your job or other areas of life that you promise you will do the work which you've been told to do from your boss. And he's expecting you to be faithful to that command. God works faithfulness within us, both faithfulness to him as his followers and faithfulness to others. Now, what is patience? Patience can be seen as perseverance, steadfastness, endurance, constancy. The Greek word is macromathia, this enduring or long-suffering Patience is the ability to wait or to wait upon the Lord. To exercise self-control when our immediate desires are pressing within our own hearts. To use restraint to gain a prize at a later time. Patience is what God uses as a tool within us to bring about the disciple he longs for us to grow into. Growth takes time. The greatest things in life take time. And so when we are asked to do something, sometimes it will take years before we see that come to fruition, before the promise of what we began with actually is met. Anyone who longs to purchase a home, it takes great patience and saving to actually see that come to fruition. Through the Spirit, God works out patience within us. Think of a time where your patience was tested. Are there times in your own life you could be more patient? When is it hard for you to be patient? I'll be honest, and my family can attest to this, sometimes I get a little hangry. When I'm hungry and I want to eat, at some point I I, I hit a point where I start to get frustrated because I just want to stop and eat, and I've never been one to skip a meal. Patience is a virtue. Patience is brought about so that God's will could be done in our lives. In Luke 8, chapter 15, Jesus said, As for that in the good soil, that is, the seed planted in the good soil, they are those who hear the word and hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit in patience. Psalm 86 says, But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. God shows his faithfulness to us and his patience with us as his children. And so the work he's doing within us are the qualities of him himself. That God is faithful. That God is patient. In our story today, we see Abraham, who's been given this great promise from God that he would make him great, that all the nations of the world would be blessed through him. He made this promise and moved Abraham to a new land with new people of which he did not know, which was at that time a major thing for someone to do. And he did this in Abraham's life at a latter time. He was 75 years old when he had him move. And Abraham took with him his nephew Lot, his wife Sarah, and they moved to the land where God had promised. Now, along the way, Abraham had many trials. He had many times where he was unfaithful. But the promise held true from Genesis 13, we first see it, where God told Abraham that his descendants would be like the dust of the earth. If you could number the dust, then you could number his descendants. 
And then later, which is a promise all of us have come to know, if you can count the stars in the sky, then you can count your descendants, Genesis 15. And in this promise, we see that God says, from your seed, from yourself will come this. And Abraham was an old man at that time. For those in the room, how many would like to start having kids in their 80s and 90s? What if God said that he wanted you to have kids in your 80s and 90s? We won't get into that question. That's a little too, little too deep. Most of you have been blessed with many descendants already. Kids and grandkids and some of you great-grandchildren. Abraham was given a promise where God says, this is my covenant. I'm making this covenant with you. Not for Abraham's sake, but for God's will to be done. Not that Abraham was special by any means, but that God wanted to accomplish his will and purpose in this life. And he chose Abraham, and he remained faithful to Abraham, even as Abraham wasn't faithful to him. Along the story as he moves, Abraham has one moment where he's in Egypt and tells the Pharaoh that Sarah is his sister. That's kind of a tough thing for a wife to hear, I would think, when your husband is telling others that this is my sister. He didn't trust the provision and promises of God. And then, later, when Sarah encouraged him to take Hagar to have children through him again, or through her, again, Abraham strayed from God's promise that a seed would come through Sarah. And so we see Abraham begin to stray in the promise. But our patience is tested through time, is it not? Patience is tested through time. The promise fulfilled The seed promised Isaac wasn't born until 25 years after God first talked about his descendants being as numerous as the dust. Ten years after Abraham had moved into the land is when Sarah approached him about having a child with Hagar. Ten years of waiting for this fulfillment and his patience began to grow thin. His faithfulness to God began to be questioned in his own heart. And so when he sought to have a child through Hagar, a child was born. And it created family turmoil between Hagar and Sarah. But God still remained faithful. In our reading from Genesis today, it said that Ishmael, who was born of Hagar, would be would grow, that God's blessing would still flow through Ishmael, that he would have 12 sons, 12 princes. And from Ishmael, we have the Islam people today. The three greatest religions of today, Christianity, Islam, and the Hebrews, the Jewish people, all trace their ancestry back to Abraham, that God was setting a covenant with a people and choosing a people. God's blessing was flowing through Abraham. Yet Abraham faltered. Have you ever had times where your faithfulness and patience were both tested? Times where you struggled or began to doubt God? In our Reading today from the gospel, Jesus says some really hard words to the people who are following him. To eat my flesh and drink my blood. That's a pretty hard statement to hear from the one you've been following. And so our text says that many people left Jesus. That this this was way too hard for them to hear. They no longer were faithful in following him. They departed from him. And yet Jesus asked the twelve, will you leave me too? And even in the hard teachings in their faith, 
which Jesus said, we won't leave. In you is life. We'll continue to follow you even when it gets hard. And this is faithfulness. That when life gets hard, whether in our faith and our walk with Christ, when we're met with, with challenges as a Christian, or when the things of the life of life bear down upon us and we're tempted to stray from faithfulness or being patient, Christ asks us to endure, to be filled with the strength of the Spirit, to go to the Holy Spirit for help, to endure, to remain faithful, even if you won't see the promise that God is longing to do in and through you. I recently had a conversation uh, with a strong Christian woman who I admire and who serves the Lord faithfully. And we were talking about the challenge of God calling a missionary overseas to go to a people that most likely would end the missionary's life. And the struggle of remaining faithful to God, even when you know what you're going to, will only be perilous, that you could die. It's hard to be faithful when God calls us to do big things. And sometimes it's hard to be faithful when God calls us to do the little things. My wife reminded me just recently of all the little acts of faith that God calls us to every single day, whether it's sharing a word with someone, inviting someone to a Bible study, whatever God is putting on your heart to remain faithful in the little things because the little acts of faith can be just as big as the big acts of faith. If you read the stories of all of the big names of people who have come to Christ, because of someone being faithful, you will find a backstory of all of these lesser known or never known people who remained faithful in preaching God's word that eventually led to someone you may know who preaches the word, such as Billy Graham or other famous people who came to Christ just in the simplicity of their own hometown church, people who helped raise them in the faith. And so I'll ask you today, do you feel that you are being faithful in how God has called you? Are you walking as his disciple in the little ways and the big ways? Do you feel that God is producing patience within you? Are you a patient person? Or are you quicker to anger, quicker to speak? God longs for us as we dwell with him to produce himself within us. Christ in us, God in us. And as you walk closer and closer to him, the fruit of the spirit begin to flow within you. God plants the seeds of faith. God plants the fruit and the fruit grows. So my encouragement to you today is to remain faithful to God and how he has called you. Remain faithful to where he's leading you. Be patient and long-suffering in the times where it's hard, whatever it is in life. For in this, God is able to produce the righteousness within us that he desires. I have one final story which I feel exemplifies faithfulness and patience. My uncle Lyle Kanabi, some of you know him. He's a character, but he is a tried and true cattleman living by Greenville. He has done very well in his life in training dogs, farm dogs, hard-working farm dogs who are faithful to him. I remember hearing a story where as he was scooping manure in the pen and uh, hauling it out with the tractor, 
he had had the dog sit at the gate, an open gate which remained open all day. And the dog's job was to sit and guard that gate so no cattle got out. And he spent all day going in and out, cleaning the pen until the job was done at the end of the day. And all day that dog sat there, guarding the gate, being patient, waiting for his master to call him into the tractor for the day's work to be done. He was patient and faithful as the master gave the command. And at the end of the day, when he called him up into the tractor, he said, good job, let's go, dog, and then closed the gate. We want to hear from God, good job, well done. You remained faithful in what I told you to do. You were patient and long-suffering, enduring to this time, to now. Receive my blessing. Come into my presence. May God work faithfulness in our hearts. And may we be patient in all things as God works his fruit within us through the power of his spirit. Amen.